What's up everyone internet? Thank you make this video part today. I'm so excited to upload one for you guys because this video we'll be taking a look at an anime that really got me by surprise, Talentless Nana. Now I know I did say I was going to do a review on the Tanya movie, but after I finished watching that first season, apparently this anime came up as a recommendation. So you know what? I figured if I like Tanya, maybe I'll like this as well. So anyway, this anime came out back in 2020 and follows a group of kids on and on who are going to a high school slash summer camp and apparently have superpowers called talents. And right off the bat, I can already tell them why this anime is so overlooked because at first glance, it is checking off all the boxes that make it a sort of cheap copy of My Hero Academia. Let's run through the list. The entire cast is a bunch of kids with superpowers. They're going to a school as men teach them on how to control their powers. And on top of that, the main character, Nanao, is the typical outcast character with no superpowers and low self-esteem, but really wants to be a hero. Sound familiar? Okay, for the record, I am not the biggest My Hero Academia fan, so I was almost turned off after the first few minutes of episode 1. Maybe that was one of the reasons on why people were turned away from this show, because at first glance, it does look like a cheap version of My Hero Academia. Despite its quirky nature, no pun intended, I decided to continue on forward with episode 1, which pretty much introduces the whole cast of characters. I mean, there's a kid that can shoot fire, there's a kid that can shoot ice, there's a kid that can teleport, there's a kid that can heal. So there are a lot of different kind of powers that you're introduced in the first episode of the season. Enter Nana, who is the annoying cute girl that every anime needs. And it shouldn't come as a surprise that this character also has a superpower, which is the ability to read minds. So pretty much the duration of episode 1 is basically this annoying girl trying to be this outcast kid's best friend, and I guess it's kinda cute, but it's kinda cheesy sometimes. By the time I finished episode 1, I was just thinking to myself, okay, so this is what this show's gonna be about. It's gonna be about this girl being this boy's best friend, they're gonna get into a relationship, they're gonna fall in love. I guess that's sort of cool given how there's superpowers involved, so I guess she's gonna try to help him get his superpowers. Wait, hold on, wait, what? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Did that just happen? Did we just kill off the main character? <laughs> So this is where the show reveals its true nature as the main focus is centered around Nana who's just a regular person with no superpowers whatsoever and has been sent to this island by the government with only one mission in mind, kill every single one of these kids. Now that may be extreme but let me ask you this, would you sleep well at night knowing that there's a teenager out there that could level your entire neighborhood if you wanted to and he just so happens to be your next door neighbor? I think not my point exactly. And right after episode 1 the story takes off as we watch Nana infiltrate this school where she systematically takes out each of these kids one by one. Holy crap, this show does not pull any punches because some of these deaths are very creative. Honestly, if you look at this story from her perspective, it's almost like if Batman decided to kill every member of the Justice League. Now, while she is in fact a stone cold killer, to everyone else, she's just a sweet and innocent little girl while this murder spree is going on. Okay, you know what? Forget about that Batman reference. This is mostly like a horror film where you're following the serial killer rather than the victims. It wasn't until I realized that this is pretty much Among Us, but with superpowers. Now, I have sort of mixed feelings about Nana. On the one hand, I love how she's able to kill off these superpowered kids, but on the other hand, her ways of convincing everyone that she's innocent in all this is a bit of a stretch. She pretty much plays the cute little innocent girl call whenever someone is suspicious of her, and even though she is near a dead body, everyone else will say, no, not Nana, she's too little, there's no way she could have killed this guy, he's too powerful for her. Meanwhile, Nana is just giggling in the corner. Honestly, it came to a point to where I said, you know what? Kill them, Nana, because they're too freaking stupid to figure this out. But yeah, that's pretty much the general idea of the show, and while I was watching it, I knew that in the back of my head, there was only one season. So while I was enjoying most of the episodes, I was just hoping that the finale would stick the landing. Well, it sort of did. And without going into spoilers, I will say that there comes a point where Nana has her come to Jesus moment right before the credits roll. And that would be a great ending if there was a second season where we could ride off that emotional cliffhanger. But knowing that there's only one season and the odds of a second season being made is less than likely, I gotta tell you, I was kind of a bit disappointed. Had the ending been different and more tailored to a one-done kind of story, I would have given this show a much higher score. 
but because the season ends on a very downer of a note, it does leave a sour taste. But still, I highly encourage you that you give this show a chance because it does take the popular superhero trend and adds its own unique twist to it that really does make it stand out from everything else. So to summarize this entire anime, Nana is a wolf among sheep. But anyway, if you're looking for something to watch right now, I highly recommend you watch this show. And with only 12 episodes, it is super easy to binge through. Watch, Nana's gonna come through the door right now to kill me for that bad pun. Well, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. That was my overall view on Talentless Nana. If you like what you saw, click the subscribe button so you can get us up from this channel. I'll see you next time with a brand new video. Bye-bye.